Okay, hello everybody. My name is Jeff Foost, and this is how to build a website. And that's exactly what today's lecture is going to cover. We are going to cover all of the different elements that you'll need to think about when putting together a website. Um, so from, from concept to the actual technical steps, that is what we are going to be talking about today. Okay, so first things first. Before you get started, uh, we have to we have to talk about what is needed to actually create a website. Um, and you really need two things to get started right off the bat from a technical perspective. And those two things are you need a website host and you need a domain. A domain name is simply exactly what it sounds like. It is the name of your website. So for instance, Amazon has amazon.com. Harvard has harvard.edu. So depending on what you want your website to be called. So when you look for a do domain, it doesn't really matter where you buy your domain. There's lots of companies that sell domains. Um, but the, one of the first steps you have to do is you have to search for your domain name to find out if it's available. Um, so you can do a domain search for the name of what you'd like to be called and if it's available then you can purchase that and this is something that you purchase annually. If you'll notice that there's different extensions on the, um, the website address here, it says Amazon.com. The com is short for commerce and that's the most common extension of a website and that's to indicate that you're doing business. Um, for instance, EDU would indicate that it's an educational university. Org is for organization, so on and so forth. And so depending on what type of website you're doing, that may determine what your, what your um, website extension is. Lastly, you have the URL, the Uniform Resource Locator. And what that is, is you can think of that as like the address of your site. So that's the exact location that you would have to type into the web browser to actually find the, the, the content that you're looking for. And the website, what is a website? A website is a collection of content, often on many pages that is grouped together under the same domain. So um, a good analogy to use would be like a store. So if you had a store, your domain name would be the name of the store. And then the address would be the URL of where the store is located. And then the website would be the actual store and all the aisles of, of the goods that you're, you're selling. So that's another way to look at how these, these different elements combine to create a website. And one of the other things that we're going to have to look into when figuring out how to build this website is we need to de determine whether or not we're going to use a website host or a website builder. So some website hosts offer website builders and some website hosts just offer hosting. So there is a slight difference in what you're looking to purchase. So in general, website hosting is a bit cheaper in pricing. And however, the reason why this is a little bit cheaper in pricing is because you're just buying space on a server. Nothing is configured, nothing is really ready yet. So if there's any website builder or any program that you're building the website on, you would need to install that into your website hosting. Uh, so we usually leave this for uh, web professionals that they work in web and they do websites all the time. They manage multiple sites. That's somebody who would probably take advantage of the website hosting for, for its cheaper rates. Now, if you're building with the WordPress website builder, you can buy a more specific type of hosting known as a WordPress hosting. 
And what's good about this is a huge majority of websites use the WordPress software. Um, to this day, 35% of websites are currently running a version of WordPress to run their website as of 2020. And what's good about WordPress hosting is if you go to your web host provider and you ask for WordPress hosting, the server's already configured and ready to go for installing WordPress. And this is something I'll show you later to where when we install WordPress, it's literally just a one-click install process. And what's also really good about WordPress is that you can customize anything on WordPress. If you have a template that doesn't have exactly what you need or a website that you've designed that doesn't have exactly what you need, there's all these additional apps that you can add on to WordPress and they're called plugins. And so by adding on these plugins, you can get additional features like video capabilities, slideshows, um, contact forms, mailing lists for subscription, um, newsletters. Um, you can get backup services. There's uh, ways to program your Facebook and Instagram feeds using plugins. So plugins are a very powerful tool in the world of web. And the last option you would have is some website hosts, they make it a, even that much simpler for you by providing you what's known as a website builder. And a website builder is a, it's kind of like a drag and drop interface where you can just build you can use an existing template and you can build a new website based on an existing template. So really what you're doing is you're choosing a template that has a style that you like. It has colors or mood or fonts that you like. And then you go in and you just further customize those colors, fonts. You swap out the text with your own information. You swap out the images with your own images and then slowly it becomes your own website. I would say this is this option is the least technical of all the different options we have to build a website. So if this is your first time building a website, you might wanna make sure to go with a web host that offers a website builder as part of their web hosting. So before you get started, how do we figure out what type of hosting you will need? Well. The first thing I would ask yourself is what type of website do you plan on building? So look into the cost for different hosting plans offered by web hosting providers. Um, some of the different things you want to look at is what site builder are you going to build this website with? Because oftentimes that will, that will be determined by what web host you go with. And what I'd also recommend is to compare your options. So do a quote from three different companies. Find out how much it would be to purchase a domain, to purchase a, a year of web hosting, and whatever other features that you need uh, to build your website. So compare with three different companies. And the reason why I say this is what you might find out is that the three different companies that you, you do this quote with may gr vary greatly in terms of how much money they charge you for these services. I would also look around before you commit and before you check out. Um, there's an app called Honey and there's many other apps. Um, I would do a s quick Google search for promo codes or also use the Honey app to, to scan for additional promo codes that can be used to further knock down the price of your purchase. So when you've compared three, you should be able to find site builders or websites that could, could do it more optimally or efficiently. And you'll decide what is the most important feature? Is it, are you looking to have the most cost effective solution for a website? What are the features that are important to you? Now I had to look into this 
a couple months ago, and the three considerations that I found that most uh, web developers look for is speed and the response time of the website, the cost of the service for the web hosting, and last and also probably most important is the customer service. And so those are the reasons why you'd probably want to go with a, a web host. Compare those three things. The first thing I have not found a huge difference in, the, the last two categories for price and customer service, uh, these do vary greatly. So definitely get a couple different price quotes from, from different companies on this. Some additional options that you're going to want to consider adding to your website some additional costs are domain privacy. And one of the things that we have to do when we set up a website is we need to list an owner. We have to attach a physical name and a physical address to the website. That way, in case there's anything going on uh, illegal with the website, uh, the authorities would know who to contact. They, they would know who regulates or who's in control of the content of that website. Um, so what domain privacy does, because this, be, this can be a little bit of a security threat. And so because since it's an, a national registry that anybody could look up, this is public domain information. If your physical address is the one that you're listing, that's that's not very secure to do it that way because technically strangers could find out where you lived. And so what you would want to do is you'd want to enable a feature that most web hosts uh, provide, and this is known as domain privacy. And so what that will do is your physical address will be on file with that company, but in the public registry, everybody will see a fake address. It might say something like John Doe, and then it might have the address of, of whoever you're using as the web host. So that's the domain privacy feature. That's definitely something that you should look into. The SSL is another feature that most websites recommend you do. And what that is, is that's end-to-end -end encryption. And so when you put a secure socket layer, it, you're putting a layer of security so that any data that goes in or out of your website is encrypted. So people cannot steal your website data. This isn't so much of a big necessity or, or a deal with, with people that are putting up things like portfolio websites because there's no information, all the information on the website is public anyway. So it's not a big deal. But if you're doing anything like if you're accepting PayPal on your website or if you're doing any sort of payment processing on your website, then this is a necessity. This is something that you absolutely must have. And how do you know if, you're, if your website is SSL protected? Well, what's going to happen is when you type in your address, instead of it being HTTP, it's going to say HTTPS, and the S stands for secure. So any, any website that lives on, at an address that's just H, HTTP, it's technically not safe. Anybody could, anybody could come in and they could steal that data off that site at, at any time. And the other last feature that's a good feature to look for in a web host is I prefer a web host that provides automatic backups so I don't have to do it myself. So that's another feature that I sometimes look for in a web host. Okay, so let's take a look here at some of these different builders. Um, in terms of the website builders, I would recommend you start there first if this is your first website. And the first place that I would look into is Adobe Portfolio. The reason is that Cal State University students get web hosting for free as long as they are subscribed to the yearly Adobe Creative Suite subscription. So given that a lot of students have that already, 
this is a good option because it's free. The only thing that you would need to pay for is the yearly domain and maybe the domain privacy, which that would maybe be about $20 a year. So you could do your website the most efficiently using Adobe Portfolio. The next two, Wix and Squarespace, are very popular examples, and that's because they have a huge number of templates. They're well-designed templates, very stylized, already highly developed, and, and the drag-and-drop website builders are very easy to use. And what's good about this is you skip a lot of the technical steps because when you buy a website from Wix or Squarespace, you literally can buy the domain, the hosting, and everything all in one. And when you do that, Wix and Squarespace will actually link your domain and your website hosting plan together so that everything's pretty much set up. You just have to start entering in your information into one of their templates. So that's one of the easiest ways to go. Another really easy option is format.com. And they're Pricing may look a little higher than some of these other ones, but if you look, there's one plan in particular that's a basic plan. And it's a really easy builder to use. It's just simple text and images over white or black backgrounds. It's very basic style, basic plan, um, but it's only $7 a month for the hosting, uh, which, is, which is pretty affordable for a website builder. Here's an example of some of the, the templates that Wix and Squarespace offer. So you can tell that the styles vary greatly, but what's good about these templates is that they can give, you, give your website a certain look and very quickly. You can just swap out some colors and some backgrounds and you can get up and running in no time. So here's an example of some of the different Wix plans that are offered. Looks like their cheapest offering right now is 13 a month for a personal website. And your other option would be if you don't want to do the builder, you could do a website host. And so an example of a website host, these are two companies that I've used as a website host before. And um, I'm, I've been very happy with, with everything from their speed to their customer service to their pricing. So I, I would recommend these two companies personally, uh, SiteGround and ChemiCloud. And just to give you an example of the pricing there. Uh, so for instance, the very basic website, one, one website with not a lot of extra options four dollars a month and for six dollars a month you can get different things like backups or the ability to build a second website if you wanted you wanted one that's another option that we didn't talk about is when you buy web hosting if you if you had a need for more than one website then it would definitely be in your advantage and you'd definitely save money if you did the if you did the website hosting as opposed to the website builder. And then here's a ChemiCloud pricing list here. And so again, very similar pricing, $4, $7, and then there's one for $7.66, a turbo speed one. Okay. And that brings us to, I also wanted to bring up some additional resources that you can use for this project. Adobe Spark is really good for if you want to create a style for your website in advance. You can make mood boards in Adobe Spark where they show you color palettes and font styles. And Adobe Color is another tool that's very useful. If you have certain colors, like say you're doing a website for a company that has logos of a certain color, what you can do is you can find complementary colors to those colors that you're working with. And Adobe Color helps out with that. Pixabay is a resource where 
as long as you create a free account, you can get access to using images from professional photographers. And so there's a lot of really good content. If you feel like you don't have enough content or images for your site, check out Pixabay and create a, an account with them. Usually just for crediting the artist or you give them a little donation. And LinkedIn Learning is another resource to where if you just type in web design or graphic design or website development, there's going to be tons and tons of resources and courses that will give you additional practice in, in doing everything from, from designing a better user experience of the website to creating mood boards for the website. So I also recommend you check out LinkedIn Learning. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to move on here and we're going to talk a little bit about let's say you wanted to create a website of your own. One of the things I recommend you do first is just start taking some notes on a piece of paper. This is known as a mock up. And so this is a one particular person's website design here. So they're going to have a, a logo in the upper left-hand corner, which is pretty common. Then there's going to be a title of the website. There'll be a little shopping cart button in the upper right-hand corner. And they've figured out how many pages they're going to have. They're going to have a home page, an about page, a mission page, a store page, and a contact page. So this is a five-page website. Oh, there's more. There's a blog, poetry, film, and photography section. So it looks like about nine pages total that this person is going to build. Uh, the blocks indicate where there's going to be different images. And then the Find Me is a section where there's going to be links to all the social media. And the Facebook feed, that's the area where this person is going to program in a Facebook feed to be on the front page of their website as well. And then at the very bottom, there's going to be a logo with a little some copyright and, and privacy information. So this is a good this is a good start because this is known as the mock-up. And so if you know how many buttons or how many pages you're going to be using for your site, now this helps you go find a template that looks like this somewhat. Because if you can find a template that already looks like this, then it'll be much easier to build your website. The second thing that we can do is to help pre-produce our website is we can create mood boards. And so these are mood boards that were created with Adobe Spark. And so if you open up Adobe Spark, um, you can swap out different font styles, different color palettes, and you can combine them with different images. And as you can see, they create different moods based on the font styles, the colors, and the combination of images. Here's another two examples here. So obviously, these are four distinct styles that look totally different. One looks very clean and sleek. So mood board is a good way for getting your ideas on paper in advance before you even go out and start looking at templates. The reason why I would recommend you do a mood board before you go out looking at templates is that it's very easy to fall in love with the look of a template because of the images and the text that are currently on it. But sometimes when you swap out the text with your own text and, and you swap out the background image with your own image, it can make the template look totally different. So if you do know you're using a certain image for the background, uh, that's something to keep in mind as well for, for looking at these templates. Because again, it's not so much about finding the perfect template. The, the mock-up and the mood board will help you more than finding the perfect template. Oftentimes, a perfect template doesn't look so perfect when you, when you swap out all the elements. So what I would do is try to find a style you like. Try to find a template that has nice fonts or it has this, the same color background that you want or it has bright images or black and white images or whatever style or mood that you want. Try to find that in the template 
and then that'll be less work that you have to do on the design end. Another option you can do is you can purchase a website template that's already built. And this serves kind of like a website builder. And so there's a lot of existing WordPress templates already out there. And one of the sites that you can purchase WordPress templates from is ThemeForest. This is not the only company that sells these, but you can purchase a WordPress template and then you could load it onto any web host that offers a WordPress web hosting plan. So this is a good way to save money because one of the reasons why Wix and Squarespace and some of these other providers are a little bit more money is that they are charging you for a website builder. And so when you buy a template, you're bypassing the cost of the website builder in exchange for maybe a one-time fee. And so in particular, this is how I did my website, is I went to themeforest.com and I picked out a template that I liked. I'm doing a, a music portfolio page, so it's mainly to display my music. There's also some, some film clips that I'm going to put up there and, and maybe some images of, of me teaching film and, and audio. And so this is mainly a music web page. And this is the template that I found that I liked. It had the right color scheme. It had a dark background. And I liked that. I liked the purple, uh, the purple underlines under the buttons. And it has some s simple text animation and slideshow capabilities. It has a lot of good features. It's already set up for a musician. So there's like a gallery and there's an album section. There's an event section where you can put in listings of, of, you know, tour dates that you're having. So by me selecting a template that's already for the purpose that I'm doing, I'm saving a lot of the work. And now it's just going to be about taking this template and swapping it out, swapping all these images out with my own images, swapping all this text out with what I want it to say. Okay, so how did we do here? How does how does the cost look here? So the way this worked out is I ended up purchasing two years of WordPress hosting from a company called chemicloud.com. And it was about $381 total cost for two years. And what I was able to do was this was there was a coupon code. I did purchase this around the Black Friday, November sale. And so I got a 65% off rate. And so the uh, $380 um, was actually, so that's about 190 a year. So um, that, that got reduced significantly. So that got reduced all the way down to um, $133.56 for two years of WordPress hosting. So roughly $67 a year. And my one year domain cost with my privacy protection is $23. And the WordPress custom template that I purchased from ThemeForest was $46. And so this initially cost me $202 to get set up and the average annual cost of this website is about $90 a year, $89.68. And so this year I pay $202, next year I only pay $23, and then on the third year I'll have to buy the hosting again. But with what I've done here is I've kind of just used a one-time cost of $50 and and now my annual cost is just going to be about $90. So I'm pretty happy with the pricing. I'm very happy with the customer service that ChemiCloud has provided as well. They helped me through the install process and did a really good job with that. Okay, and so now on to the hard part. So I am going to go ahead and after this slide, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you an example of what ChemiCloud and a web host looks like. Um, but what you have to do after you purchase your hosting plan and after you purchase your domain 
is you do have to link and activate the domain to your hosting plan. And that involves a couple different steps. So the first thing you do, it is under domains. And your web host will have a section called domains. You'll need to f finish out that information. You'll also go to the hosting plan information and you'll program that you want your hosting plan to be servicing the domain, the same domain name that you used. So by doing these two steps, you're linking and you're activating your domain on your purchased hosting plan. One of the more technical things involved with this is they may ask you about something known as name servers. And this is just the name of the server that your website exists on. And so really your website exists on a group server with a bunch of different other people. And so that's why you have one server, which is your main server. And then you have a second server, which is like your backup server. So these name servers, you can customize them to whatever you want. Um, however, since I'm not really that technical about this, um, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. So there was an option on ChemiCloud just to, to leave the name servers as the default names. So I chose to do that. Now, the next thing you do after you've set up and activated your domain and your hosting plan and you've set your name servers, you go into a login known as cPanel. And what cPanel is, is it's a hosting control panel. And it's a web-based program, so you can access it through your browser. And this is the control panel where you can do things like back up your site, or you could upload your website. There's many different ways to upload a website. If you were coding it from scratch and you knew all about websites, you can just do a feature that's called upload the FTP. And so you can literally just take the file folders and upload them onto the cPanel. Another way, another tool you can use is called PHP My Admin, and this is also found under the cPanel. Now, the, the way I installed mine is called Softaculous App Installer, and that's how I installed WordPress, is through the cPanel. So there's an option to do a one-click WordPress install under cPanel, and that's what I did to install WordPress. Once I installed WordPress, I had to install my specific template that I just showed you that I downloaded from ThemeForest. And what I did with that is, usually when you buy a template, they give you specific instructions for how to, for how to import that template. And so I did follow those instructions and I was able to get my, my template activated. Now, just a heads up, this sounds really technical, this sounds really complicated, but here's the deal. In going back to the slide about what are the three things you value in a web host, this is where the customer service is key. Don't panic. So as long as you buy a web host that has good customer service, you can always go ask them for help through live chat, through email, or through telephone. They will be able to help you one way or the other. And usually they're very, very fast about this. So for instance, when I imported my template, I was able to get WordPress installed correctly, but when I imported my template, something wasn't working right. And I was having a lot of different errors. I tried it three different times and it did not work. So I basically contacted through email. I, I explained my issue and I, I told the customer service representative that was helping me, I told him, I said, this is the first time I've did this. I don't know if I've set this up right. Can you check my settings and can you make sure this was set up right? I sent him the attachment. I said, this is the WordPress template I'm trying to install. Can you help me install this? 
I let them know all that. I let them know that this is my first time doing this particular type of website install, that I'm not a web designer by trade. They were very, very nice and, and helped me through the entire process. They actually just took the whole thing over from that point and they, and they made sure that WordPress was installed correctly. And they also made sure that the, the template was installed correctly. So that's what I'd say about this is that if you do get stuck, reach out to customer service and don't be afraid to reach out to customer service. It's okay to let them know that I don't know what I'm doing or I'm totally confused. This is too technical. I'm lost. Uh, these web guys, they do this day in, day out. They're, they're professionals. They're very technical people themselves. So something that's very technical to you is something that they do all day long. And so it's going to be very easy for them to help you out and get you through that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at ChemiCloud now. And I'm going to go to the client login. And I do have things saved in here. Okay, and so the step one to linking and activating your account is to go into your domain settings. So your domain settings are over here in this particular hosting provider. And this is where you have your options. So if you had a domain that you purchased through ChemiCloud or through your web host, you'd go to manage domain and you'd check all your settings there. If you were renewing, you could click renew and if you want to find or register a new one, that's the option for finding a new one. If you have one that you own at another company, you can get it transferred in. And this is the way to, to do that transfer request. It may take a couple days and, and customer service may have to help you with the transfer if it is in fact with another company. But all that's done through this screen. And so this is how you would get your domain linked to your web hosting. Okay, and so in looking at our services, you can see that I have WordPress hosting, the professional hosting, and when I click on, I could go to manage product to take a look at that. Okay, this is where you log into the cPanel. So once you link your domain with your WordPress hosting, you would go into your cPanel and it looks pretty crazy but there's just this is a hosting control panel and so what this does is this allows you to use website builders backup software um, in particular we were installing WordPress so this this is how you do a one-click install of WordPress you literally just hit that button and that will install the latest version of WordPress onto your web hosting platform. And then once you have WordPress installed, um, as I mentioned before, what I would do is I would go to the README document of your WordPress template and look at the README and see the instructions for how they want you to import that template. They usually have really specific and really good instructions for how to do that. And so once you do that, so you install WordPress. And once you install your template, then you are ready to go. And the way you build on your website is you would go to your website address my website address is my name, it's jefffoos.com. And so this is what it looks like here. And if I wanted to edit it, I would go to a site called wp.admin. I already logged in earlier and so it still has me logged in from before. But if you look at this, this is the dashboard for WordPress. And so this is like the, the builder for WordPress. There's what's known as a front end editor and a back end editor. 
Right now we're looking at the back end editor. Um, there's plugins right here. And so this is where you, if there's anything that WordPress can't do, you can add it here. For instance, MailChimp for WordPress is a mailing list. Um, 10 Web is something to where you can run your Instagram feed through this plugin. So anytime you do an update on Instagram, it automatically updates on your website. Contact form is used for sending messages. And so, and then you build your new pages here. So all your different pages are here. And so what you would do is you would go into edit. You would change whatever you wanted to change. Like for instance, um, I'm going to change some of this title, some of this titling here. It says news and it says latest news and updates. So if I wanted to change that title, I'd click on the pencil and maybe I want to call this updates. I'll call this news updates. Um, no, let's just call it news. I can't make up my mind. All right, so we'll call that. We'll make a change like this. We'll say we'll put a slash instead of an and. And then we hit update. And that updates the change to the website. If you want to see the change, you go to view page. And the change we did was down here. If you'll notice, it was right. Maybe it's a little further down. right here latest news slash updates so and then it says news right here and there we are and so that's how you make an update and that's how you start building your website using WordPress okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to I'm going to sign off here and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching.